So I think my biggest concern, I've got two concerns. One is that not enough people are gonna show up, and the other is that too many people are gonna show up. So I'm on my way to talk to some students about how to become a billionaire by smuggling Thanksgiving dinner. Inside this box is the answer to how Chinese smugglers are able to make millions of dollars a year trading, bringing stuff from Hong Kong to China. There are two boxes. One of them contains a turkey, the other contains a chicken. I'm gonna randomly show you one of them and you tell me which frozen bird you're looking at. So we're gonna go into box number one. You're looking at box number two. That sounds harder than you would think. So what are we trying to explain here? This little exercise that we're doing right now is going to help us understand the smuggling gap. What is the smuggling gap? Well, if you gave your kid $10 to go and bring it to a friend and he arrived at the friend's house and he only had eight, that $2 had to go somewhere, right? And, you know, your kid's probably a good kid, but they took the $2. So let's think about this on an international trade scale. If you're in Hong Kong and you're sending things to China, then we expect the value of the goods leaving Hong Kong to equal the value of the goods happening in China. And what happens is there's a difference. The value arriving in China is lower than what left Hong Kong. One way the smuggling gap could arrive is if people mislabeled their products. So if you took a high value chicken and instead called it a low value turkey, what you would see is a high value chicken leaving Hong Kong, but a low value turkey arriving in China. And so we would have a gap between the value of goods leaving Hong Kong and the value of goods arriving in China. But of course we have to ask, why would you want to mislabel your goods? Why would you want to tell them that your chicken is turkey? And the answer is tariffs. If tariffs on chicken are higher than the tariffs on turkey, then you can avoid those tariffs by mislabeling them. And when you have tariffs, you have an incentive to smuggle, which we saw in the American Revolution with the Boston Tea Party. But this mislabeling strategy will only work if a customs official can't tell the difference between a chicken and a turkey. How easy is it to tell the difference between a chicken and a turkey? Let's see what the students say. I'm scared that I'm gonna get this wrong. You don't have it. I feel like this is basic knowledge that I don't know. both of them. Because I just want you to look at one. Well. Alright, so that went really well. We had a good number of students come by and we had lots of varied answers. Let's go ahead and check out that data and see how they did. Alright, so I got the data and I looked at how my students did. Did they do a good job? So of the students who came and did my little experiment, half saw the turkey, half saw the chicken. For those who saw the turkey, 75% correctly identified it as a turkey. Is that good? I mean, it's not 100%, but what about when they saw the chicken? Of the people who saw the chicken, only half of them correctly identified it as a chicken. That means they were literally guessing about what they were seeing. One, two, three. Turkey. Turkey. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Turkey. Oh. <laughs> Can have you all say what you said, it, Turkey. what you thought it was. Turkey. Turkey. Ah, oh, yeah, we got that right. Right? Mm, that no? looks like a that turkey. Looks like a that turkey. looks more like a turkey. This is the turkey. Oh! Yeah! <laughs> now imagine if you're a customs officer and you're inspecting these smuggled goods and you look and see, like, is this really a turkey? You look inside and you can't tell the difference. You don't know if this is a chicken or a turkey. They say it's a turkey. Fine. It's a frozen bird. I'll, I'll agree that it's a turkey. 
you let it through, you don't give it the higher tariff. This example was given to me in Economic Gangsters, a book by Ted Miguel and Ray Fisman. I'll put a link in the description below. This was a strategy employed by a Chinese trader, Lei Chongjing. He would import things from Hong Kong into China, but then he would mislabel them. He would say they were items with lower tariffs. And in that process, he was able to save millions of dollars a year on tariffs, which then allowed him to become a billionaire. Now, of course, this is illegal and it is unethical, so I do not recommend this as a business strategy. But I still love this example because of the powerful demonstration of economics shaping our world. These people did not want to pay high tariffs, and so what do they do? They change their behavior. People respond to incentives. It's fantastic. Do you think you could have stopped the smugglers? Comment below and tell me if you think you're looking at a turkey or a chicken.